Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to 25 North, everybody. It has been a hot minute for us. And it's probably been a hot minute for you, probably a couple weeks. But for us, it's been over a month. How are y'all doing? Been I'm a good, little tired. Been good. <laughs> I'm a little tired. A little, little tired? Yeah, yeah we, we out here. Living the peak months. This is true. The best, the best time of year. Yes, <laughs> excited for fall. It's been yep. nice. Texas is actually not in the triple digits anymore, guys. Yeah. <laughs> That's movement. Now That's you guys cute. just need three snowflakes to shut down all your infrastructure. Yes. <laughs> I'm begging for it. We've had snow here. Already? Already? Well, Already? Yeah. Yeah, that makes it, sense. It didn't, it didn't stick around on the ground level, but up on the tops, it was up there for a couple of days solid. Like full mountain coverage. So that was nice. It was really beautiful because of it. You know, the misty mornings. The snow, the sun coming up, green trees. It's, uh, it's special. Nice. Very cool. Hell yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah. It's it's muggy as hell here in Minnesota. Um, Hurricane Francis that just sucks. pushed up all that humidity right up the Mississippi towards us. It's super, super muggy. Like, it was like 90% humidity outside. Wow. It's gross. gross. Yeah, I don't know if I could do it. It, is, it it was it was nasty. I was at a wedding yesterday, um, and the entire event was outside. Like it was a beautiful wedding, a, a, a fantastic wedding. But the the ceremony and the reception were all outside in ninety percent humidity. I have no idea how the two grooms, because it was a same sex marriage. I have no idea how the two grooms wore their their tuxedos the entire night, day and night ice packs in the breast pockets probably yeah it yeah yeah it's good on that strategy. it was a gorgeous wedding though it was um at a at this ranch in rosemont to which is so, just south of the twin cities yeah it was a beautiful wedding and they had a fajita bar like they did a fajita nice. bar for their um for their reception dinner which was amazing I'm all about all these alternative food options we're seeing at weddings. None of this, like, overcooked roast beef that 45 people have brought from various houses. Like, yeah, let's just let people make tacos and be done with it. I was talking to a friend, um, and they went to a wedding that did a mashed potato bar. Which also sounds really good. I do love me some mashed potatoes. I know, right? (laughs) We had this conversation on the podcast. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah. We all clearly enjoy eating. It's been discussed enough to back yeah. that up. Yeah. And don't worry, Rachel. There were veggies for the fit for the veggie friends. The fajitas. The veggie fajitas. The onions were delicious. But yeah, um, we are starting a brand new season, and book three, part three, of the Jewel of the Indigo Isles Adventure. This one is going to be wild. It is written by Linda Zayas Palmer. And if you remember, if you did, if you listened to our interview with Steven, he said he gave Linda like the hardest challenge, like some of the things he asked Linda to do in this book are some of the most wild things ever. And I can confirm. So I am excited for the listeners to hear what's coming up. And I am excited for you all as players to partake. It is going to be a raucous, wild ride. And it all starts with a party. Because Chapter 9 is called Party in Rumplank. Because <laughs> the player, the characters just came back. They have the jewel. They succeeded in their mission. In the character's point of view, like the adventure's done. Like they're, it, it's good. You're good. Um, you're, you were hired to go find the pieces and bring it back to the king. Like you're, that was you succeeded in your mission to find the pieces and bring it back to the king. You just need to bring it back to the king now. That's all there's yeah. left to do. And there's a party right, waiting for you there, right, right there. Um. But you have an entire book. So as you can assume, it's not that easy. That's crazy. Why but would before it we ever get there, be but before we get there, <laughs> y'all hit level eight. Let's we talk did. let's talk to our listeners. Let's tell our dear listeners 
Yeah, Jackson is flexing. You can't see this, listeners, but Jackson is flexing on the <laughs> camera. Um, it's very impressive. Yeah, you, you're duty God, bound to say that as shirt. a fiance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's see. Let, flexing dear or listeners, stretching? I'll never tell. Dear listeners, let let our players regale you with their level eight. So who wants to go first? I can. Good old Vesuviac the dragon. Um, so for my level eight feats, uh, I got to get a class feat as well as a skill feat. The class feat I decided to choose is Restorative Channel. So now whenever I use one of my heal spell slots uh, from my Divine Font, I can choose to change that instead to Cleanse Affliction, Clear Mind, Sound Body, or Sure Footing. Just basically make those heal spells instead of just targeting HP, also target a lot of uh, different status conditions as well. And then uh, Skill Feat, I picked a fairly low level feat for my Skill Feat. It is the feat of Ward Medic. So as I am currently an expert in medicine, whenever I decide to treat disease or treat wounds, I can treat up to four targets. So I can heal all of us with one treat wounds uh, at a time instead of having to chase people down and do all that in the background. Uh, but in addition to this, I also got an eighth level archetype feat, feat of Blessed Spell. Uh, so now whenever I cast a spell from a spell slot, and that spell targets only a single ally, like Lay on Hands. Uh, I can also attempt to remove a harmful condition from that ally, which is going to be dictated by my uh, Mercy of Grace. So Clumsy, Grabbed, which that's going to be super huge, and Paralyzed. And in addition to all this, I got an extra spell slot, which I'm deciding to have Implement of Destruction put in for... For the time being, we'll see if I swap that out later. And just a quick clarification is cast a spell from a spell slot. So not a focus spell. So not lay on hands. Right, yeah. So yeah. heroism. Yeah, like heroism or um, heal. Like, that's not a defined font, but uh, like heal from an actual spell slot if you prepared it in a spell slot. But yeah, yeah. So it's... Um, yeah, that spell also gives you the mercy, which is just amazing. <laughs> yeah, I like I like going up to things that grab people and going, "No, you didn't!" <laughs> right? <laughs> Especially with how many times we've encountered swallow the hole already. Yeah, that's gonna be huge. <laughs> so basically, now your lay on hands and sp your spells that target a single ally both have that mercy on it so basically any of your spells have that mercy on which is awesome that's pretty cool all right who's going next ah i got you i got you zaba leveled up he grew stronger and more powerful and more hardy than everybody else on the party as is normal what else is new he's just ever pulling ahead of vesuviac hit point wise it's it's at a margin of you know half of sills hit points difference um, yeah, so, you know, I leveled up with that. I got the whole menagerie of feats. So for my class feat, I took follow-up assault just to try and really make sure those misses, uh, if I connect on the next one, it's going to make them pay. What else did I do? Yeah, for my archetype, I took advanced maneuver, took exacting strike, just more, if I miss, I'll hit stuff. And then, uh, I took a fun little skill feat. We'll see if it comes up. It's a gamble. We'll see if it's ever used. It's a good gamble. Like how, it, if it is used, it'll be fun. It's sweet. Yeah. But it's so situational. But, you know, it felt right. I love how every time you talk about Zaba's HP, it's worded like a math problem. It's like, if Zaba's HP is half of Syl's HP away from the Suviax HP, how much HP I, does Syl have? <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually stated Zaba's HP, what it is. Um, I'm better. sure people out there can figure it out, but it's juicy. I'm sure it's triple digits. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's been triple sure digits been for triple a couple digits. levels. Yeah. 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 Even Syl is triple digits now, so. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Rachel, you spoke up. You get to go next. That's why I don't talk. 
Um, <laughs> let's see. Syl got real sick of traps, always killing them. Although I don't think we actually found a trap in that last fight, but I was pretty sure we were going to. So they are now master in thievery and took a class feat called delay trap so that if a trap gets set off, it doesn't happen for a little bit so they can get away. New archetype, since we've done enough feats in the first archetype to get a new one, is medic dedication because Syl also wants to be able to be self-sufficient and heal themselves. So that gives, let's see, battle medicine can be used once per day, ignoring immunities. Um, and then on top of that, I did a little finagling with retraining. I wanted to take what is now called robust health that gives even more bonuses to healing and allows Syl to only be immune once for one hour from battle medicine, but that apparently is a general feat, so I rechained a general feat into a skill feat and then trained that as my seventh level general feat. So Yeah, because you had ch- yeah. you had chosen Finangly. to take a skill feat in your general feat slot. Right. And yes, my seven. assurance was Yeah. So fancy, better healing, better thievery. Nice. Now I won't have to rely on Vesuviac. Was Will you let Sil touch yeah. you? Sil's gotten uh, to. Yeah, they've done yeah. healing. More partial that way. It's a respect thing. And last but not least. Sil's, Sil's got the stomach for it. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. And last but not least, our um, our our, our broken little animist boy. <laughs> That's crazy. Um... Yeah, I know Timothy got obviously leveled up to level 8 like everyone else. Uh, he has a few new funky abilities, one of which being uh, magical knowledge, which basically bumped him up to uh, uh, from trained to expert in nature. So now he's a lot better at nature, uh, which is pretty baller. Uh, Timothy now also has another fun ability called Soul Synchronization, which basically what this means is that whenever Timothy's possessed by his spirit, as a free action once per round, I can attempt a recall knowledge check. Uh, and then I can also, or all strikes while I'm possessed, will deal an additional two points of spirit damage. And I gain resistance equal to half my level against all physical attacks, but have weakness to spirit damage equal to one third of my level. So there's that trade off. And the last thing is I have the skill feat of Spirit Seat, uh, which basically lets me commune with uh, previously expired dead animals that were in the area. Uh, if I mess up that roll, they will not be able to talk me and or talk to me, and that's whatever. But if I do succeed it, I'll be able to recall knowledge from those spirits potentially from an hour to maybe even 24 hours before they passed away or what they've seen in that area. So yeah. Also, they can a, have been scared. You make when a they nature died. check with that, which is why you bumped it to, to expert, yep. right? Yep. That makes exactly. sense. That makes sense. I've also got a cool rock in my inventory, uh, but you know, that's like whatever. A what? I got a cool rock in my inventory, but you know, that's yeah. whatever. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you're just carrying, you know, a level 20 artifact called the Jewel of the Indigo Isles. I mean, no big. Name. That's no big deal. You know, it's not at all the namesake of the entire book. <laughs> you don't have like all four abilities active from every single one of the shards. It's not like I have all eight Dragon Balls and I'm about to wish for a fucking oh, eight, eight Dragon Balls. What? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, whatever. Literally I am. Wound me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. The the, the TV guy is, yeah. is criticizing us. Listen, Dragon Ball's the one that I have. <laughs> <laughs> is that the wrong number of? I think it was the wrong number. It's it was seven. Seven Dragon Balls. Yeah, yeah, I see. Okay, I was I one was off. I know. I just I just being a shit lord. <laughs> uh-huh. Also, uh, side note, super excited for Sparking Zero. <laughs> I cannot yeah, wait for that game. It's about to come out, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I'm excited for you. Also, is this a game? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. Jason, okay. before I forget, 
DM'd you something really quick. Could you check that for me? Because I think there is one thing on Timothy's sheet that needs to be double checked. All right, let me check here. Hold on. Yeah. Sorry, I just like I just saw this. Let me. It's gonna be really cool to actually know stuff about the things we're fighting now. Yeah. Yeah, no, for his, sure. It, it, his HP is the same. It, like it went up. It is. It did. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. No, I'm like I'm double. I'm double checking it. I remember it, it, it being 96. Is the thing though. Nope. Was it? No, you were definitely lower than that. No, it went somebody up. spends it's... a lot of time looking at our health, so I can calculate ways to describe my own. Did okay. Definitely went up. I think yeah. we were both at 92 last level. Oh yeah. Just okay. looking at my path builder. I don't know why I thought I had a different max. Never mind then. Forget what I said. You're fine. You're fine. Th this is what happens when you're playing an animist who like gets like one hit point per level or or like a yeah. D four per level or like, something. I like squint a little bit and I like tilt my head and like, did I level up? Yeah. Yeah, wait, That's hold on. It's I can tell you right way. now how much an animist yeah, gets. Yeah, you don't have that <laughs> barbarian constitution. God, I wish <laughs> I did, though. I want to get to triple digits of four Vesuviex so fucking bad. You will. I bet you 80. will. For sure will. Yeah. I bet 80 HP right now. That's like, that's funny. how low it is. That's so funny. That's why I always laugh so much that ever you get the hard time about having low health when I have had the lowest health the entire time by a yeah, long but you, shot. You've got a weak tummy. Yeah, you got a weak tummy. There's something else to tease is Vesuviac about. <laughs> that is true. Hey, I can heal sick tummies now because of all my That's new something. abilities. You can. I'm so impressed A lot with of you, rounds honey. spent removing your own sickness instead of retching, but <laughs> at least it's reliable, right? <laughs> Listen, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine? We're gonna be fine. Alright. You ready to get to Shindig on the road? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shroding? Sure nah. What? what? Shroding? Let me zaba. Like, like Shroding or Scam? Shroding. I tried to say sure thing and just totally flubbed it. Don't worry about it. You pulled me. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I was playing it off, hoping no one would notice, but whoops. Everyone did? <laughs> no. My cover has been blown. <laughs> Scatter. <laughs> All right. So, um, as the sh as um, the ship is about to pull in, anybody remember the name of the ship? The Crimson Chromatic Queen. Chromatic Queen. Chromatic. There. Right? Chromatic Crimson? Queen. Crimson? No? Okay. It makes question everything. I did the queen part. <laughs> you all can see. You all can see that there is a party going on. There are festivities going on in rum playing. There's like fireworks being lit off. You can hear the music um, as the ship approaches. Um. It is a raucous party, and as you as you get closer, well, well hold on. Does anybody have rum plank lore? No. This is Eric lore. <laughs> oh, well, uh, I don't think any of you are from rum plank, so give me a society check. Okie dokie. Uh, do you want I it have, to be blind? You can do it. You can do it. Or in, a pirate? You can just do it in the. Um, you can do it open. That's fine. Hey, right. well, there you go. Why did I roll twice? Oops. Oops. No, you know why you roll twice. Oh, right. You know why you roll twice. Vesuviac's yes. so dead. That's a bad sign. All right. I have well, plus zero um, to society as well. I needed that nat twenty. <laughs> well, Vesuviac, um, you got a critical success. You know that, and I, I don't know why you would know this, but you can you can ex you can come up with a reason and explain it for explain it. Um, that there is a festival going on in Rumpling. Now, usually the festival um, is celebrated um, it's usually celebrated a bit earlier, but because you have, um, because you the, you, the king knew that you were on your way home, uh, they decided to delay it just a couple days in order to align the festivities with 
your return to rum playing. It's called Founding Day. Typically, Founding Day is a one-day extravaganza that's held in rum playing in honor of the city's founding and in honor of its founder, Poppy Von Barnacle. And how it's celebrated is with games and different events. And the events themselves, you could say that they vary year to year, um, but they almost always have a tall tale telling contest, a dueling contest, a big ass parade with floats and, and a marching band, and <laughs> and a drunken obstacle course called the Rum Run. So, um, so regardless of all the extraneous events, like there's always these four that that take place. Now, um, there's also different things that it's known for, like uh, a tradition. Uh, they have a tradition of ha- of having mystery pies, in which bakers wrap whatever ingredients they they fancy in these handheld like these handheld pies like the personal sized pies and they sell them to customers without telling them what's inside um (laughs) yeah so uh, there's there's those fun little things yeah that's what you know Vesuvia okay um yeah I relay it all to the party and I'm like Oh yeah, I heard. I read about this in the uh, travel brochure of the office that I was sitting in when you were uh, interviewing me. Uh, apparently, there's this huge festival going on. It's got a lot of fun events. Uh, Zaba, I think you would really enjoy the the drunk obstacle course. That sounds like something that is just right up your alley. I don't know. You mentioned there was this parade with giant floats, and I kind of have an idea. We'll see. Okay, now I'm curious. What is your idea? You do have to is, tell us. Is surprise for everyone. I just need to find, like, eight or twelve combines to help me build it. Mm, shouldn't be a problem. That, yeah, that won't be too hard. You should be aware, Zaba, sometimes these parades have a large amount of glitter, and it can be very distracting. This is fine. Okay. I have an idea. It will be wonderful. Okay. You do, you do you. Are you going to be okay, by the way, Sil? I know the last time around they held the giant festival, you didn't want to do this. Or at least well, be a part of it. I mean, it would probably be best if we ignored the festivities and, you know, figured out what we're going to do with this gem now that it's recombined and that, yeah. you know, signaled the release of a giant end of world behemoth, but... Yeah, that'd probably be really good. I mean, hey, we released that J.B. Jones guy. He can go kill the behemoth. You say he's so wonderful with magic ship. I don't know. Rovagug's minions are kind of hardcore. Davy Jones is powerful, but I don't think he's that powerful. Eh. Uh, and he's no longer know, a hero. Yeah, well, uh. And, you know, I was hired to find Gem. Expect they did, then maybe they rehire me through contractual basis. We see. But first, I build a float. You build a float. I'm excited to see your float. Yeah, yeah float, I mean, whatever. Timothy, do you want to stay with somebody? So, you, I mean, you're carrying kind of an important jewel that uh, you yeah, haven't I, wanted to share and put into safekeeping. Yeah, I can, I can stick with somebody. Uh, who would you guys want me to stay by? I plan on finding isolated warehouse to build floats, so... Got it, so not know. you. Okay, that, No, it that will track. be easy and secure, safe so. from prying eyes, but quiet. Wait from festivities. Okay. Maybe make little Timothy get bored and go even crazier. That's, that's true. Do you need, like, some fun, Timothy? Do you need to stay I... out? I would really like to have some fun. I don't think you realize it's been a second since I've been to a party, and I would like to have food that's not hard tack. Yeah, they make some really good food. You could keep an eye on Vesuviac so he doesn't puke everywhere. Timothy, when he's been told that he has to keep an eye on Vesuviac, he gets a little red in the face. And for the entire crew, 
he has been actively avoiding Vesuviac ever since, you know, uh, kissing and running away like a coward. And he's just like, yep, yeah, sure, uh, I'll, I'll be with Vesuviac. Yeah, that, that's no problem. Great. I've got some people I should go check in on since we're back here. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And uh, Vesuviac, you can keep yourself together with, you know, the townsfolk all, you know, distracted, guards looking in instead of out or up. You'll know all the urges coming to bear now that the goddess has released her talents from you. She hasn't said anything to me yet the entire trip back. I actually plan on, uh, well, I had planned on going to the church here and try to seek guidance there, but uh, I get a feeling that it exactly won't be open with all the festivities going on. I'll have to wait till tomorrow. I mean, they give pretty shit advice there anyways. Yeah, it has weird multinationalism that isn't like standard acceptable multi yeah, no. Yeah. Absolutely, Ethesium, it's like very slant and yeah, the priests, unsettling. The priests in the temple, they've got no idea what they're talking about. I more want that place because it's consecrated ground that is like the closest I can get to her without too much effort. So it, it's, it's just a location thing. I'm not seeking anybody's advice. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they that's... did find some weird statues outside of town. Maybe that's consecrated too. Yeah. yeah. Could be, but it's risky if I don't know if it's for Serenite, because if it's for, you know, Rovagug, that would uh, kind of put me in a very bad position. <laughs> Maybe you should just go find out if Temple Worship Rovagug. Mm. When Definitely you know if it is, that's a bad thing. I gather people say this is a bad thing. So we get to cleanse the holy it's- ground. Well, I mean, there will be no cleansing in this town, though. Yeah, we can't. You guys can go back to this Temple of Rovagug. Maybe Holy Inquisition, led by the more high priest of Saren Ray. He'll kind of like elbow Vesuviac. I highly, highly doubt that the temple in Rubplank is a Rovagug temple, especially since this cult of the behemoth or whatever we've been fighting seems to be very in line with Rovagug. Rovagug's like super bad. Like, like they want the world to be destroyed. Like, there's not really going to be a lot of people that openly worship them and are generally safe from societal judgment if they do. Hey, you never know. And at this point, Prince Kalupi kind of pops his head in, um, his head out from the from the hallway. He's like, "Well, we're about to dock." And thanks, Kalupi. As the ship docks in, you can see the crowd just kind of like mob the gangplank, like at, as getting ready to just like celebrate you as and just puddle around you as you disembark. I'm not used to this. This is weird. Can't say I've seen this before either. Timothy's absolutely waving though. He's he's eating it up a little. He's like, yeah, he's like, mm-hmm. yeah good, good job team. And he's absolutely playing it up, just trying to make sure, I guess, all eyes are on him. To at least, I, you know, help out perfect. Sil and not have Sil be the object of people's view. I will go first. You guys yeah. can follow or get left behind on dock, but I am tired of stinking ship. Same. Yeah, and Zabo will just walk down and kind of like just clear a path into town, getting away from the immediate shoreline. If you can smell, if you can smell those hand pies, that's probably where he's going. Yeah. So like people try to clamor around Zaba, and like, oh, Zaba, hey, hey. Hey, 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 you want you want this drink? Uh, you want this drink? Hey, hey, t- tell us how was it? I, how was it? How what? What does the jewel look like? How does it feel? Timothy, like, Timothy has announced you will be official teller of fable. Ask him all questions and give him many drinks and to then as, lubricate his tongue. As the, I have work to do. As the crowd I sees Timothy, all in tears. As the crowd, the crowd just kind of turns to look at Timothy. Oh, Timothy! Timothy, hey! And you can just see, like, they're handing out bottles of rum. Like, take a swig! Yeah, tell us! How was it? How was it? How many many skeletons did you slay? 
Uh, Timothy's not going to say no to a free swig. I think what he does, it's almost like a switch flip flips in his head where he's immediately like back in that like party mode he used to do. Uh, takes like absolutely chugs up more than multiple shots of whiskey. Hands back over the bottle of somebody. Like I think he tosses it and somebody just fiends for the bottle, just like goes for it in the air. Uh, and he's like, how many skeletons would he slay? That's weak. You didn't see the other creatures that we killed with my own hands and all of our hands. It was, oh, it was a bloodbath, let me tell you. And he is eating up the attention. Uh, yeah, man, it was a bloodbath. You just hear see? from overboard. It's Gus just like, Gus hey, gets Gus. me. Hey, look at Gus, though. And he just like does for some Gus. Oh, yeah, Zaba hearing There's Gus. There's a giant do that cloud. Thing where he like turns, takes the. <laughs> takes the four steps back necessary and will just hand scoop Gus and is going to take Gus to work with him on his project because he thinks he may have creative insight for what he wants to achieve. Whoa, I didn't know I was going crowd surfing. <laughs> you do a good job and like give you magical alcohol. Very rare. <laughs> is it made from mushrooms? Then I know exactly what it, it is. is. This is... Have you heard of that? Oh, tell me about it, man, and just kind of fades away. Yeah, yes, come with hey. me. Oh, the Suviac, the Suviac, ah! Normally when I hear people saying of the Suviac, they're running away, so this is a weird change of pace. I think Timothy will, like, elbow the Suviac, but he says, like, oh, come on, lighten up a little. You deserve it. And then realizes what he says, like, oh, I mean, if you want to, obviously. Uh, and then just continues to spin tails. And, um... Everybody's just looking at Timothy and Vesuviak as Sil slinks. Yeah, I was gonna away. say, here's a stealth roll. Leaving. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Sil slinks away. Exactly. All right. Um, where is everybody headed? Um, I heard Temple of Many Colors. I heard the Royals. You wanted to go to the Royals. I hear the parade. You wanted to go talk to go do the the grand parade and uh so zaba's express intent is to go and find 12 gamayan volunteers to help him build a float uh in a secluded warehouse to be revealed at the time of parade ideally i can send it to you if you'd like to know what, what zaba wants okay so concerned he's gonna make a giant zaba paper mache that spits fire and breathes acid or something like that still slinking around trying to pick up any rumors about stuff that's going on, keeping an eye on Timothy to make sure he doesn't lose the jewel. But they might get pulled into something, some, I don't know, gambling or dueling or so, something that's close by. So Timothy and Timothy and Vesuviac, you're going to the Temple of Many Color. Yeah, Timothy would stick with Vesuviac because okay. he was kind of told to, despite him wanting to run away because he does not want to deal with the repercussions of his actions. Sounds good. So as you um, as you do that, Prince Kalupi's like, all right, all right, let's part ways. Come on, everybody, let's part ways. Um, step aside now, let let the heroes through. Oh, uh, well, Zaba's already gone, but um, let Timothy and Vesuviac and I guess still decided to stay on the ship. So. Uh, Timothy and Vesuviac on through now. <laughs> And um, once the crowd disperses, Prince Kalupi's like, all right, um, well, you we can uh, go report into my father, or um, you said you wanted to go see Prismatic Colby. I mean, I could show you the way there. If you don't mind. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Colby's been a friend of the family's for quite a long time. All right. So, uh, uh, Cold, so Prince Kalupi leads you on to the Temple of Many Colors. And let me actually pull up a map of Rumplank so you all can see this. All right. Rumplank, activate. Rumplank, activate. All right, there we go. So the Temple of Many Colors is, you see here, Rumplank, Red Feathers, Barrel Square. Temple of Many Colors is right here. It's, you should see, you can it. see it on the map. It's that uh, gray looking yeah. building with the orange dome in the center. Yeah. Right there. In Barrel Square. In Barrel Square. Yep. So Prince Kalupi leads the way there 
And as so he approaches, um, the the temple of many colors is it, is it's open. So um, so as you can guess, um, as is the case, the temple is always open. Even during the festivals, the temple is always open. I mean, Rump, there isn't a day that goes by in Rump Link that there isn't some kind of festival. There's always something celebrated in Rump Link. So um, festivals are no big deal, and today is no different. Yes, it's a bigger festival, but it's the temple still open. And uh, the and Prismatic Colby, just like the other 365 days a year, or 364 days, um, he is at the temple. So as you as he sees you enter, he's like, "Oh, oh, welcome, my my sons and Kalupi. I I didn't expect you. I he- had heard that you had come back today, but oh my." Is that what I think it is on your neck? Timothy sees uh, them looking at it, and I think instinctually kind of puts it away just because he didn't realize it was actually out like that. It's like, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm supposed to keep it guarded. It is indeed. My, my, my. This is, um, well, here, let me, give me, here, why don't you two give me this check? He's like, all right, well, I see. Let me, let me, oh, I understand. I understand. Maybe we should have this conversation back in my office. I think it would be better, right, Timothy? Y- yes. Yeah, the, uh, that's that's fine. Yes, I agree. I think this is this this would be much better. Please. One second. The two, the, please, uh, Prince and uh, Vesuviak, please join the two of us. Uh, please come here. And he he, he leads the way um, back through the temple into a private office. And he's like, I see. So, how long have you been cursed, Timothy? What? What are you talking about? No, I I, I sense a great curse on this crystal. The crystal? Yes, on the jewel. I not, thought you meant all of me. I've, I've been cursed for a long time, but this thing? And he like, sh- he shows it for a second. like, it's not cursed. No, I, I, I tr- trust. Let me, let me guess. When you have tried, you have found yourself with a bit of bad luck, right? I mean, I've forgot to like, you know, I've tripped on a few shoes here and there and like, I did mess up a few things, but like, it wasn't anything bad. It's, it's been much greater recently, much more, is you've had much greater occurrence, is that correct? I mean, yeah, but like, I'm human, I'm kind of used to having weird bouts of bad luck sometimes. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, I take it you probably haven't been in a fight yet, but I can assure you that in addition to a curse of ill fortune, that there is a curse of festering wounds. That if it should you succumb to a wound, you will not recover your hit points in the traditional way by resting. And any, any other source of healing such as magical healing from myself or from your fellow priest or from first aid and bandages, you'll only recover d- half as quickly. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, I suppose this one wouldn't be so much something that you would quite know, but there is also a curse of pliability in that... What now? In that, um, well, you have quite a friendly attitude, so you might not notice it, but um, the curse itself makes you friendly to everybody. Everybody. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty friendly with anybody. I mean, I've Vesuviac seen it, like he just was Vesuviac, like, Vesuviac seen it. I've tried flirting with one of the enemies before. Have you tried taking the, the jewel off? Uh, no. Only because Syl told me to kind of keep it guarded, and it was safest with me. Hey, let's try an experiment. Would you mind taking the jewel off right now and placing it upon the table? Pasiviak is mm. looking extremely tense through all this, and now is that, definitely thinking about his scimitar. <laughs> the the roll you just made, Vesuviak, you notice 
that or that prismatic Colby is very intrigued by the curse. He's not so much intrigued by what the curse is. He's not so much intrigued by the jewel itself, and but more so by the curses. Like, this is a level 20 artifact, but there is something very strong about these curses that has the priest, the head priest of the uh, Temple of Many Colors intrigued. There is something about mm. these curses that has him, the head priest of this temple, yeah. like it's it's spark, sparked something in him, and that's what you've that's what you yeah. notice with your role. Not only did we give Timothy a level twenty artifact, we gave Timothy a level twenty cursed artifact. Timothy, Timothy, right now, absolutely is despising the idea of leaving this thing on a table, but. He does take it off, and he's like, I mean, if you're not going to touch it or be no, weird with it... we I promise you, we will not touch this. Um, and okay. you have my word, and Vesuviak will be right here, and the prince will be right here. But if you could, could you, could you walk out of this office and head down 100 feet down this hallway? Oh, man, you're going to make me count? Fine. He just takes it off. Looks to Vesuviak like, I don't trust this, but at the same time, I'm like, I have to do this. Puts it on the table. I guess I'll be right back. And then goes, looks at like one of the directions, and he just says, ah, fuck it. And just starts walking. And Kalupi Kalup like kind of looks at Vesuviak and the priest and then walks out into the hallway, leaving the door open to keep an eye on on Timothy and the the priest and Vesuviak and the jewel. It's like he, his head is just bouncing back and forth between the, uh, Timothy and then the others. Yeah. And sure as shit, once Timothy reaches 100 feet away from the jewel, the jewel disapparates from the table and rematerializes around Timothy's neck. Timothy, from like a little bit away, just goes, what the fuck? Just as I suspected. This is not, this is not an ordinary cursed artifact that we are dealing with here. Somebody has taken this artifact and the, the pre, uh, prismatic Colby waits until Tim, Timothy's back. It, At Timothy's in, full in on office. sprinting back into the room. Yeah, Timothy sprints back into the room. Uh, his his hair that was really nicely well done for the party is like already disheveled, and he's like wheezing a little just from how fast he was sprinting. He's like, "What the fuck?" Yes, it's just as I suspected that um, somebody has placed a curse on this artifact, and unfortunately, my dear Timothy, it appears that in order for you to rid yourself of this cursed item, the person who is going to bear the item needs to be aware what exactly they are about to receive in order for the, you to be rid of it. Have you tried oh, giving shit. it to somebody before? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. I mean, no, you know what? And he like thinks about it for a bit. I. I thought it was weird and I thought I was tripping. I thought I gave it to Syl the first time around. I handed it to Syl, but then the next thing I knew, I saw it around my neck and honestly, I thought I had like a weird lapse where I thought I gave it to them, but that doesn't, like Timothy's like sitting on that for a bit. It's like that, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. Gems don't teleport. They, <laughs> they don't teleport. Yeah, you were, you had wanted to bridge yourself, but you couldn't because the person that you were that was about to bear the the jewel did what didn't realize what exactly they were about to partake so you were unable to complete your thoughts but oh. fear not fear not dear timothy if you if you so choose if you if you so choose um i will take this item off your hands I will take, and I will alert 
the temple guards, and we will have this temple guarded 24 hours a day. And and the the power the temple's power here, I believe that I can channel it to suppress this curse. With all due respect, I don't think my Captain Sill is going to be very happy with the fact that we went through all this effort for me to hand it over to somebody. So he like looks to Vesuviac, like very concerned of what he should do, mm. but he is holding it close to him. He's like, I, I feel like it's best if I hold on to it since, you know, it was our mission to, you know, take it up to the king, the ruler of well, wherever the fuck this is. And then we'll, we'll pause right there. Sill, you said you were following Timothy and Vesuviac. Um, uh, yeah. Did you did you follow them into the temple? You know, I probably did, because Sill has become very suspicious of Colby for their own reasons. So they, I mean, I'm assuming this is in a inside, like, office, not here's Correct. a window to the outdoors. Yeah. So probably followed and... Depending on how crowded it is, either would have snuck down the hall. Yeah. Well, give me give me a secret stealth check. Okay. Well, um, yeah, you could definitely make it to the office. Okay. And listen in. Do and Can I would you this? Pi- would you pipe in at all when? Uh. Yeah, I mean, if it sounds like Timothy's saying, "No, I'm not going to give it up." then so would probably continue to hold tight but at the first you know wavering of maybe I'll give it up so would definitely jump in but it sounds like Timothy's yeah saying no right now yeah Timothy is saying no like he's yeah, yeah he is generally like well and Kalupi at this says um yeah I suppose that this is that that is correct you you were hired by my father, and he is unaware that we have succeeded in this. Um, perhaps we should go see him, and then we bring it back here to um, to yeah, have I... the to have the temple suppress this curse, or, what, or whatever your father decides. Because again, he was the person who did hire us on. With like I said, with all due respect, and when he's saying with all due respect, it feels like he's straining himself. Because he is putting up that friendly front of not immediately cursing out these people for thinking what the fuck is wrong with them. But he's like, yeah, no, I I feel like it's best if it's left with our care since we have taken care of all these shards before. I I can handle the curse. I agree. Timothy smiles at Vesuvic when he... I, I would be remiss in my duties as a priest to, if I didn't urge you that bearing these curses will do the utmost harm to you. This is the power that of the curses that you are about to, that you are bearing is no laughing matter. And I fear, fear for your life. Sir, I would like to uh, step in and say that we never asked for you to help us out with this. Uh, We came here for me to come and pray, and since we stepped through the door, you have taken us to a private room and have tried to coerce my friend out of this gemstone that the king himself wants. If the king wishes to bring it to the temple, that will be the king's decision. This conversation is over. Timothy, let's go. (laughs) Yes, Vesuviac, and he just (laughs) follows. He's like, oh, Uh, he just follows after Vesuviac. Uh, You have no idea what you're dealing with. I, Timothy, like, yells back, like, I've handled a fucking ton of ghosts in me. What's the worst this thing gonna do to me? Well, Lunar knows, but... Yeah, I know, I Timoth- know. Timothy's had a bunch of ghosts inside him. Yeah. I've had ghosts possess me, use me as a raggedy and all. This is gonna be fucking nothing. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Vesuviac just said straight back. He, he, he doesn't feel comfortable in this temple anymore after witnessing all of that. And just looks to Timothy and goes, let's go to the party. You're not going to the king? Okay. And the Prince Kalupi's like, all right. 
shall shall we go see my father? Well, is is the king going to be at the party, or is he going to be? No, the party has the party hasn't begun yet. Uh, you the 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 party is waiting for you to actually kick it off. The four of you need to be there. Oh, all we all four of us need to be there. Yes. That's gonna be a problem because of Zob. I no, I don't think that's gonna be the problem. I don't know where Sil went. You that's... absolutely know where Sil went. Sil rolled a natural one. Everybody knew that Sil was right outside the yeah. door. Oh, go 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 go! I'm like, <laughs> hey, I'm like, Timothy. Yeah, I'm like, hey Sil, think just yeah, keep Timothy's walking like, hey, without yeah. even breaking stride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knew. I, and here, I, I, I runs can. Out to leave I'm the, going to. Leaves the jewel. I'm going to reveal this Sil. to you right there. Yeah. Of course. That's awesome. Yeah, Timothy, I'm just going to Uh, <laughs> I mean, I assume... Oh, Nat won, so so probably thought they were being sneaky. Yeah, you absolutely yeah. thought you were yeah. being sneaky. Okay. You thought you, you, you had on. this in the bag. Yeah. <laughs> uh, grab anyway, it. They, you want to head over to the castle? <laughs> grab these body with one hand and, like, long. covered their face with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's one little leaf. <laughs> Yeah, hiding in a sunbeam. Perfect. I'm a speck of dust in the sunbeam. Just move really slow and you'll we'll see me. Doing the Drax, I am so still. Yeah, exactly. That I, yeah. That nobody can see me. <laughs> we can all see you. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, you guys said you were coming here, and Kofi and I are old acquaintances, so I figured I'd catch up. Sucks that you curse. <laughs> That's one extra curse on top of what I got. I mean, you do have a kid to consider, right? Yeah, I know. I'm trying my best to not freak out right now. This is what I'm working with. Well, either way. But I don't want to hand over this MacGuffin to, let's be honest, probably somebody that's going to turn out being evil, knowing our luck. Are we still standing right next to him? No, oh, like, oh, okay. I'm pretty sure Timothy's this been walking. walking away. Okay. Yeah, like we've been, we've been walking away. And the and the yeah, prince I mean, is like, well, I've known Colvy my entire life. And... Yeah, but people can be a hundred percent liars to you. You can only know one person. You can only know one side of the coin on the other side. I mean, Kalupi, did you not find it strange how the moment we walked through that door, he immediately spotted the gem? brought us to a private quarters inside the church with no way out and started to try and convince Timothy to hand the the gem over. I mean, that's very suspicious. You're not wrong, but if the if the gem is as cursed as he's making it out to be, I can see why he'd want he wouldn't want that burden on anybody. I mean, mm, yeah. I know somebody who helped us with that map. I bet she could decurse this item. She lives over in some other town through the marsh. Jackpo? Yes, thank you. She lives in Jackpo. I bet we could go over there. She's much more reliable. You can absolutely I be do that. Most of that if it comes to it. I more am concerned that we know that this gem has apocalyptic qualities about it and somewhat and it, if it gets in the wrong hands that's concerning to me as a cleric of Saren Ray who's trying to stop any sort of spawn of rog- Rovagug from coming back so very uneasy about how all that went down especially because he didn't really we've never even met the guy before that was our first time meeting him and we went through all that yeah that was that was fun, you know. I could be wrong, but boy, did he make me not feel great about that. <laughs> and the castle yeah. Yeah. Thing is right there, as you can imagine, right there on top of that hill. Yeah, we walked right to it. So we're going are we to go going to the, the castle? castle. Is that? And that's where the royals are. Yeah, I'm like, is that is that our game plan? Like, yeah, Timothy pulls you aside. So what what is our game plan here? We were definitely like, are we gonna not actually... giving this to the king. I mean, we should at least let the king know that we have it, and then let them know that we found out a snafu with the curse. Sure. We could have Kalupi go inform his dad, and we can go find Zaba and get this festival over with. Yeah, it'd do, be better if we get it over with. 
Yeah, and it helps because Kalupi was there for the conversation, so he at least knows all the elements of the curse if what the priest said was completely true. All right. Well, um, Kalupi leads the way up to the castle, and he's like, All right. Time to see old mom and dad. Yep. Mom yeah, and dad. You could go talk to your family. That'd be great. We thought maybe we'd go find Saba. No, they're not going to want to talk to me. They're going to want to talk to you. Oh. Is it like, how's the relationship with your parents, my guy? He like, Timothy like leans on uh, the prince as he asks this question. Very much like he's interested in this whole spice between his parents and him. Yeah. Let's just say my father's not the biggest fan. No, uh, that feels. Can't imagine why. Oh, hate to break Thanks, that. Thanks, Zell. Uh, awesome. Yeah, you did a great hey, job sorry, captaining not... the ship. I'm yeah. sorry, man. Uh, then, Do you yeah, even know why they to... want this jewel? Uh, just, it's just because of the history and Poppy. They just want it to. Uh, they just want it for clout to place it in the, like, place it in the castle and piss it and show it off for like, hey, this used to be poppies. But they hmm. can't do that. I mean, they don't know what the gem looks like. I mean, there's documents about what it looks like. Yeah. If there's documents about what it looks like, looks like there's also documents about its power, and they're just willing to just that, do nothing with it, have it, what, collect dust on a display case? Yeah, yeah. it's royals. Well, it's royals. you're a royal. What do you think? Uh, well, what I Come think on, is You've that... You've been with us this entire time. What I think is it needs to be locked up and kept safe. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what I think. And if we can, if we can get, suppress, suppress it somehow, um... Well, it's, that'd be the best, but first we need to decurse it. Then yeah, we probably take it to Absalom until... and give it to the Pathfinders and have it have them lock it up. And do you think this is what your parents, the king, will recommend doing? Probably either way, gonna want this curse off, and they kind of kind of can't take it off. We need Zaba before we go in to talk to the king. Well, I mean. You can go in and start it. I can. They're not gonna want to talk to me. I can go. I can go fetch Zaba. I hate to say it. I don't think Zaba will listen to you. I think we he should won't all go to get you. Zaba. I'm gonna be real. I'll speak for all of us. Zaba's not gonna fucking listen to you, man. I hate to break <laughs> it to you. He respects you the least. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Zaba's gonna look at you and you're gonna be like, oh, you're your friends and you'll be like, wow, ah, what do you know? And just slaps you away. He's not gonna <laughs> give a shit. We need to go get him. You're lucky if the least he does is throw you out of a window. Yeah. Defenestrate. <laughs> Classical <laughs> burial at land. <laughs> That's what happened to, um, what's his face? Yeah, right. our very first uh, bad guy that we killed right here in Rumplank in book one. <laughs> with the with the eye patch. Very uh, old leader of the Iron Eels. Uh, Malarty. Was it? Yeah. Malarty, yeah. Something like that. That sounds right. Yeah, we gave him a burial at land. Yeah. Made him walk the plank onto land. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Right, we're good. Let's go find Zaba. <laughs> yeah, go find you know, Zaba. Kalupi, you could go tell them about the trade negotiations. Get some pats on the back. Well, okay. if you want them to I will... like and respect you, you should tell them about your successes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I suppose. You brought back all those back all those flowers and whatever we got from the Chichori and. Yeah, they'll be real proud of you. And if they ask about the jewel, you can always say that you thought that a festival with a lot of eyes and a lot of ears and sticky fingers about would not be the best place to have an artifact of that value, and that you thought it would be safer and more discreet to deliver that in private. There you go. All right. Well, I suppose that's as good a plan as any. 
Right. And he kind of just puffs his chest. All right, let's do this. I'm going to pat him on the back and cast Heroism. <laughs> just Zaba. He hears the voice of Zaba in his mind. Just think, what would Zaba do? <laughs> so Where's a stabbing. potato sack? Okay. Here. Okay. <laughs> Where's a potato sack? And can I get myself a Gus or a Timothy? Become your own father. Well, all right. Well, um, um, shall we leave it at that before we go oh, any further? Yeah, sure. I'd say so. All right. Well, um, that is episode one of season three, folks. That is, if you wanted to help us out, ch um, check out our Patreon. That is how we uh, keep this show alive and how we are going to, well, we're going to finish season three and and this ap but how we are going to continue as a podcast and continue our plans for the next show after we finish jewel the indigo isles and we can only do that with your support um and we would love to have more support on patreon check us out patreon.com slash 25 north and if you're unable to do that just go to apple or google or spotify or wherever you get your your podcast and leave us a, a review um stars are great R actual words are even better if you could uh leave us like an actual written review that's that helps us out even more um and that so yeah until then i am jason i'm your gm we'll go around the horn here who are you and who do you play lunar and i play timothy bono I'm Video Freak, or Jackson, and I play Vesuviac the Molten. I'm Rachel, I play Syl, who doesn't have fancy titles. And I, as always, am Quarry, Closet Prophet, and I am currently playing Zaba Utrov. And may your party never end. May the your party, party never, never end. end. The Jewel of the Indigo Isles Adventure Path is copyright 2023. All logos, titles, and artwork are property of Skyscraper Studios and Roll for Combat and used with permission. Pathfinder is a trademark of Paizo Incorporated. The theme music is written and performed by Robbie Whiplash.